In this video, let's explore pipes and named pipes, which are unidirectional communication channels in operating systems. Pipes are one of the oldest interprocess communication mechanisms in Unix and Linux systems. They are unidirectional data channels, which means data flows in only one direction. They allow communication between related processes, typically a parent and child process. Pipes are implemented as a buffer in kernel memory, acting as a first-in, first-out data structure, ensuring data is read in the order it was written. Pipes have several key characteristics. They provide half-duplex, meaning unidirectional, communication. They primarily work between related processes, such as a parent and child. Pipes are implemented as a fixed-size buffer within the kernel memory. They are automatically destroyed once all associated processes close the pipe. Standard pipes are anonymous, lacking a name within the file system. In the C programming language, a pipe is created using the include unist h header file. Inside the main function, an integer array named fd of size 2 is declared to store the file descriptors for the pipe. The pipe function is then called with fd as its argument. If the pipe creation fails, an error message is displayed, and the program exits. If it is successful, FD0 and FD1 will contain the read and write ends of the pipe. When the pipe function, represented as pipe open parenthesis FD close parenthesis, is called, the kernel creates a buffer within its memory to facilitate data exchange. It then provides two file descriptors, FD index 0, which is used for reading data from the pipe, and FD index 1, which is used for writing data into the pipe. Following a fork call, both the parent and child processes share these file descriptors. Typically, the parent process closes FD index 0, as it will write data, and the child process closes FD index 1, as it will read data. This sets up a unidirectional communication channel where the parent can send information to the child. Here's a simple example of parent-child communication using a pipe in C. We start by including necessary header files, standard input-output, unist, and string. In the main function, we declare an integer array FD of size 2 for the file descriptors, a character array buffer of size 100, and a process ID variable PID. We create the pipe using the pipe function. Next, we create a child process using the fork function. If PID is greater than zero, we are in the parent process. Here we close the read end of the pipe that is FD index zero and write the message hello from parent to the right end of the pipe that is FD index one. Then we close the right end. If PID is zero, we are in the child process. Here we close the right end of the pipe that is FD index one and read from the read end of the pipe that is FD index zero into the buffer. Finally, we print the received message and close the read end of the pipe. Named pipes, also known as FIFOs, extend the concept of anonymous pipes by providing a name in the file system. These pipes are accessible via a path name, allowing communication between unrelated processes. Unlike regular pipes, named pipes persist until explicitly deleted from the file system. However, they still maintain unidirectional communication. Named pipes are created using the make FIFO system call. Here is an example demonstrating the use of named pipes for interprocess communication. The writer process code begins by including standard header files for input output, file control, unist, and string operations. It declares an integer variable FD for the file descriptor and a character array message containing the message, hello via FIFO. The process opens the named pipe located at slash tmp slash mififo4 writing only, using the open function. It then writes the message to the file descriptor using the write function, specifying the message and its length. Finally, it closes the file descriptor using the close function to complete the writing process. On the other hand, the reader process code also includes standard header files, along with sys slash stat h4 file status operations. It declares an integer variable FD for the file descriptor and a character array buff of size 100 to store the received message. 
The process first creates the named pipe slash TMP slash MIFIFO with permission 0666 using the MCFIFO function. It then opens the named pipe for reading only using the open function. After opening, it reads up to 100 bytes from the file descriptor into the buffer using the read function. It prints the received message to the console using printf. Finally, it closes the file descriptor using the close function to complete the reading process. Now let us compare anonymous pipes with named pipes. Anonymous pipes only work between related processes, such as a parent and child. They lack a representation in the file system and are automatically destroyed when all processes close them. Anonymous pipes are created using the pipe system call, and they are simpler to use for parent-child communication. However, they cannot be accessed by other unrelated processes. In contrast, named pipes work between any processes on the same system. They have a path name in the file system and persist until explicitly deleted. Named pipes are created using the make FIFO system call. They offer more flexibility for inter-process communication and can be accessed by any process with appropriate permissions. Both types of pipes maintain unidirectional communication and follow the first in, first out principle. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.